Another interesting thing about aquatic ecosystems, especially lake ecosystems, is that they go to processes or stages of development of the lake. And we're going to talk about two st such stages in this video. One is like the annual cycle that occurs in temperate lakes, and the other one is going to be eutrophication. Now, lakes in temperate zones will go through periods of warming and cooling throughout the year. This is not going to be really the case in, in cold, cold lakes, which are always cold, or hot, hot lakes of the tropics, which are always hot, because it's like they're locked in eternal winter or eternal summer. But on lakes on temperate zones, which see all four seasons, an interesting process occurs that we call aquatic turnover. And this ha basically has to do with the fact that water heated to different temperatures it will actually be at different densities. And what's going to end up happening because of that is that there's going to be circulation patterns happening within the lake. So basically on winter, let's start with winter, okay? Normally the lakes in temperate zones, some of them will be frozen. Now the interesting thing about that is that the maximum density of water is reached by 4 degrees Celsius. Below that, the water actually tends to expand. And we talk more about this when we do talk about the properties of water. But basically, the way the water molecules are set up with the hydrogen bonds makes it so when you try to really cool them down, they lock into a crystal and it actually makes it expand. Now, that means that once you hit 4 degrees Celsius, and that's the magic number, water actually tends to be float floaty. So what's going to happen is that the water will actually tend to float if it's at 4 degrees because it's less dense. Now, what that actually ends up creating is a layer of, of water that, that's more fluid than the layers which are colder. Now, on the winter, now on the winter, this means that the top of the water, which is at zero degrees, is going to be in the surface and floating to the top. And any new ice that forms will automatically be at the top. Now, this ice will actually insulate the bottom of the lake and maintain the temperature underneath that at a minimal of zero degrees. So it's never going to be cooler than that under the, that thing, which is actually nice for the lake because I guess to survive the winter, since up here temperatures could drop as low as negative 30 in some places of the earth, maybe even colder than that. So if it wasn't because of that, life on that low, and that's why in some areas of the world which are constantly frozen like Antarctica and the polar zones, a lot of the ecosystems depend on the water because in the water, it's not going to be as cold. In food for thought, right? But in temperate zones, of course, this doesn't get that cold, but it will still get cold. And this water, ice will help insulate the bottom of the lake. But this lake is not getting too much sunlight, very little, little production. And that means it's going to be very, very hard to live through that winter. Organisms will go into some a sort of like reduce activity level and they're going to become kind of lethargic. It's almost like the, the lake goes to sleep. It hibernates. And throughout the winter, a bunch of detritus, dead stuff, will accumulate at the bottom of the lake. as stuff is dying off and it will be rich in nutrients that will be decomposed throughout the winter. Once the spring hits and the winds start to hit the surface of the lake again, and the water at the top starts to be heat up more than the bottom, you restored what's called the circulation of the lake. So that means that the lake is going to turn over. It's what we call it. Now, this means that the detritus, which we used to be in the bottom, all those nutrients are going to cycle back to the top. Now, the sunlight that's also hitting here, now, especially since it's coming towards the summer, it becomes more and more intense, and the productivity starts to go up. And that restores the lake to its life. And when you hit the summer... Water is really, really hot. And so this is actually going to create a gradient of temperature where the hot water is going to stay near the top and it's going to get colder and colder as you go deeper and deeper. Now remember, by the time you get to 4 degrees, this actually is going to create a floating layer here, a layer that's more fluid than any layer that's below it. This tends to flow to the top. But this will insulate just like the winter did, Anything that's below that, now in this drawing here, there's nothing below the floor. But if there was, that layer would be blocked from the top. Which means, kind of like in the winter, the detritus tends to accumulate in the bottom during the summer. Because, not of the same reason, in the, summer, in the winter was because the top was actually separated. In the summer, it's because it creates this little gradient of layers of different temperatures, which is we call the thermocline. Now... And that thermocline ends at that 4 degree layer, which will separate the rest of the water up and again stops the nutrients from flowing. By the time you get to autumn, the productivity starts to go down because the sunlight amount starts to go down. 
And again, the turnover continues since you, you no longer have a differential layering because it's so much hotter in the top than the bottom is. But now the productivity is already going down and it's starting to go back towards that winter. Lakes go through these cycles of turnover, and this is also very important for its life because the restoring of those nutrients to the top and, it's, and the accumulation of them during the winter and the summer months and the productivity that peaks at summer months are all part of what keeps the lake ecosystem going through these stages which keep it alive. So that's aquatic turnover. Another example of how lakes go through stages is what we call the eutrophication uh, line. Basically, think of lakes as a timeline. Lakes start over here and end over there. Now you see that they're, now you see that they're very different from each other. The lake on the far left seems to be a lot cleaner than the lake on the far right, or at least less life seems to be living in that lake. Now the whole thing is that the lakes at the beginning don't have a lot of nutrients inside of them. It's just a bunch of water over the over land. There's not a lot of life living in it. Life will get there. Succession will happen. We'll talk more about what that is later in the lecture series, but life will conquer that area and it will start. But as the succession happens, you know, something we will learn about as well at the end of the video, more and more nutrients will gather inside the lake because more and more stuff will die every year with every season. And little by little, the bottom of the lake will pile up full of nutrients. So if you have a lake like here, at the beginning, you barely have nutrients. But at the end, you're going to get more and more sediments and more and more nutrients. And remember, every time it rains, more and more stuff falls into the lake coming from the areas around the lake. So in a way, much of what the lake is depends on what's coming running into it. Food for thought, if we fertilize our soil, we are adding nutrients even faster to the lakes and accelerating the process of, of this timeline, which is supposed to take thousands of years. Instead, it will take a few short years because we're gathering nutrients so much faster than normal if we fertilize our lawns and those fertilizers end up in lakes. Now, unlike aquatic ecosystems like rivers and the ocean, when there's a lot of water circulation and, and the water keeps being renewed by the water cycle, on lakes the water tends to sit there and gather nutrients throughout the life of the lake. So especially during the rainy seasons on the outside of the lake when the more and more nutrients carry into by runoff. Now when this happens the lake little by little starts getting more productivity because more nutrients means more algae and more plants can grow in the lake. But eventually what happens is that the surface of the lake gets so full of nutrients that it covers, it gets covered with plants and algae. Now when that happens, the productivity up here is extensive, so, so strong that the lake basically gets covered completely with algae. Now when that happens, this algae will start to die off very fast and sink to the bottom and start piling this off very fast. The lake starts to get shallower and shallower and the detrivores living down here, they're going crazy. They're saying, yes, we got so much stuff to eat, so much stuff to decompose. And that means that decomposition process would add so much carbon dioxide that the bottom of the lake will be toxic, saturated with carbon dioxide. And eventually, this becomes all of the lake, a layer of living grass on top and dead on the bottom. And that's the end of the life of the lake. A bunch of decomposers and a few producers but not much of other kinds of life that depended on a stable ecosystem to, in order to have its food web. All the fish, everything else that lives swimming in the water will not do so well. And that's what we call the process of eutrophication. Now this happens because uh, a gathering of nutrients. But if humans add nutrients to the lakes faster than normal, this could happen anywhere. Even on rivers it happens sometimes because of massive amounts of runoff. And this has to do with the fact that we are putting fertilizers on our lawns, which add nitrogen and phosphorus to the water. Now, nitrogen, the water can even have normally because of nitrogen fixation and other processes which naturally add nitrogen to the water. But phosphorus is very rare in life. So to add all that phosphorus suddenly, when it's used to be such a limiting nutrient, the, the algae goes, yes, it's a banquet. We have all the phosphorus that we wanted. But that's not supposed to happen for a very, very, very long time. And we deprive the, upper, the lake of the opportunity to have its normal life cycle. And the succession events go so fast that it ends up killing everything in the lake. It's, I know it's counterintuitive that the more life you get, the, the less you end up getting at the end. But the productivity, when it's too much, sometimes can be a problem. So that's eutrophication 
and the aquatic turnover cycle of lakes. And I hope you learned a lot, and I'll see you in the next video.